So you're considering moving to Florida. Well, you're not alone because over 300,000 people thought it was the right move for them in 2023, 2022, and 2021. So you gotta be onto something, right? Clearly people agree because Florida was the second most popular relocation destination in the United States for the third consecutive year. And just this past year, Money named Tampa one of the greatest places to live. Time named it one of the world's greatest places. And Zillow says Tampa will be one of the hottest real estate markets in 2024. All incredible honors and well-deserved. But life here in the Sunshine State isn't all beaches, boats, flip-flops, and margaritas, even though I wish it was. And how many wishes do I get? In this video, I'll share what they're not telling you about life here in Florida and my experience since moving to Tampa Bay a little over five years ago. Because let's be real, y'all. You have to live here every day, you have to travel to get anywhere, and most importantly, you want to love where you live. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. And as discussed a little over five years ago, I packed up my family of five, we moved 1,200 miles south to the Sunshine State and haven't looked back since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. But let's get right into this list. Now, one of my goals with this video is to be as transparent as humanly possible. And that starts with recognizing that I have a bias. I love where I live. We made the decision to move to Tampa Bay. Our family loves living in Florida and not everyone will. And we make these videos with the intent of helping you make qualified decisions, not trying to steer you to make them. So I wanted to include a, a clip of this article that was written by Julia Glum because it gives fair and impartial perspective on her experience here in Tampa Bay. It's great, let's dig in. Tampa is a rare combination of action-packed and affordable. The median home sales price is about $381,000, one of the lowest on our list, and you'll get plenty of bang for your buck. There's nightlife galore in Ybor City District. You can immerse yourself in sports. The Buccaneers won the 2021 Super Bowl, of course, but fans can also enjoy University of South Florida Bulls games at Raymond James Stadium. Head indoors to catch the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field, or three-time Stanley Cup champs, the Tampa Bay Lightning at Amley Arena. The Tampa Bay area, which includes nearby cities like St. Petersburg and Clearwater, is bursting with culture. I agree, it's a huge part of the reason why we decided to move to the Tampa Bay area. But things have changed. The median sales price on a home is now $430,000. And oh, by the way, the Buccaneers are back in the playoffs. But let's get into what they are not telling you. So the first thing on our list that we need to address is the weather because this is the one that throws people for a loop. And I know what I used to think about Florida, right? It's too hot, it's super sweaty, it's muggy all the time, I don't want any part of that. I used to think that, all right? So I'm one of those people. If that's you, I totally get it. However, what we learned was that's not necessarily true. It is totally dependent on where you live. Florida is a humongous state. And you know, a lot of the state is subtropical. There are areas towards the north that get pretty cold. I mean, literally this morning in the panhandle, there were snow advisories. <laughs> you thought snow in Florida was so funny. So that is interesting when you think about that. One of the most beautiful areas in the entire state, you know, the, the Emerald Coast up there has gorgeous beaches, but like, y'all, they were in danger of getting snow this morning. So our weather is pretty diverse as well. Now, here's what you need to know. Eight months out of the year, it is going to be warm slash hot slash oppressive. That's the best way I can put it. Now, here's what I'll say. I moved from a Northern climate, Detroit, Michigan. It was cold, dreary, rainy or snowy, sleety or something terrible the entire six months from basically the middle of November all the way through to roughly around Mother's Day. I hate the snow. I hate the cold. Brutal, okay? I am so glad we made that exchange, but not everybody's gonna be for that. Now there's a little fun fact, here in Tampa Bay, it's never reached 100 degrees, which is pretty cool. Um, but when you get further inland in the state, areas like Orlando, it's definitely gonna be warmer. It's typically five to seven degrees warmer in Orlando in the summer than it is here in, in the greater Tampa Bay area. If you love hot, humid weather, then that could be a great spot for you. You know, from the months of July, August, and September, all average 90 
180 degrees. So that is some of the hottest season we have. That is also our rainy season. Uh, typically will rain daily during that time period. Now, when I say rain daily, that doesn't mean it's gloomy and overcast all day long. Can it be? Yes, but that's actually pretty rare. Typically how it starts out is it's warm and muggy in the morning because it was 80 something degrees overnight during those months. Um, it gets warm all day, it continues to heat up because the sun's beating down on it. I literally will make you feel like you're in a bag of clams. I heard that, that uh, term before and I was like, that's a fair representation for sure. Um, and then it'll usually rain sometime around midday. That's the earth doing its job. It's cooling everything back down. And when I say cooling, that's relative. It is still <laughs> warm, but you know, that's the time of year that it's really hot. Now from basically November all the way through to April, we have glorious weather, right? Very mild temperatures here through the winter. We average in the 70 degrees. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. We can still have some cold evening. Typically we'll turn our heat on here maybe two to three times a year. That's how few times we actually do it versus running it constantly. But those summer months can be oppressive is a term that I've heard before. And I think that's a fair representation. It's not not going to be for everyone but if you're tired of cold dreary and you can put up with the heat you know those summer months are definitely not the end of the universe y'all lots of people have been living here there's over 20 million people that live in this state trust me they don't all get up and leave plenty of them have second homes here they live up north or in other places during the summer i understand why not everybody has that option but listen the weather is is worse than you think and better than you think too it's one of those weird paradoxes that you just have to deal with living here in florida the second thing on this list is going to be bugs and wildlife because if you're not used to seeing the type of wildlife or pest that we have here in florida it can be a little bit of you know a jarring situation because not everyone is used to this if you live in areas that have a frost or a deep freeze every winter you know you get pretty spoiled in terms of what you have to deal with you know where we moved from we had that deep freeze every year so we didn't have like you know poisonous snakes and um a, a lot of poisonous spiders there there were some right but like a lot of that stuff tends to die off in a rough winter and we're subtropic we don't have that issue right this this area is right to grow pest wildlife all kinds of things so that is something to take into consideration you know um, where we live here in the greater tampa bay area mosquitoes are not nearly as big as a problem they aren't even as bad where i live here as they were back in michigan so that is my experience and my perspective but i don't live in swampy areas if you do i assure you the mosquitoes are going to be terrible everything that you've ever heard about florida is probably going to occur there <laughs> right so like keep that in perspective you don't want to be in flood zones to begin with so don't stick yourself there if you want to live on a home in you know near a lake in a wetland area you know, these are the things you're going to have to take into account so just keep that in perspective but you've got things like termites here which you may not have where you live you've got no seams those little buggers are way worse than the mosquitoes they will bite you they're, they're so tiny you can't see them hence the name no see them but they probably bite two to three times harder i i, I won't put them on par with like a um a deer fly or anything like that but like for something you can't see to to, uh, to give that kind of a poke, man, it's a weird experience. You've also got fire ants, you know, just be mindful of that. I don't go trudging around in my yard without shoes on on a regular basis as much as I would like to. I just understand and respect the fact that they, there could be something in there um, that could bite me. My son has stepped on uh, fire ants before. No one else has in the house. He got bit pretty good and it was it, not a pleasurable experience for him. So keep that in mind. You know, we have, um, again, snakes in five years. I've seen one snake in my yard. Um, there are alligators in the area, so keep that in perspective. Crocodiles are not an issue here. People ask me about the gators all the time. Like Juan, you know, talk to me about the alligators and here's my share. Um, in five years, uh, there's never been an alligator sighted in my neighborhood. It's that simple. I also don't live by a open body of fresh water, so keep that in perspective. If you live in, in those areas, you're going to experience what mother nature has to offer, so keep that in perspective. We also have really cool birds here, um, and <laughs> they get really kind of comfortable. Uh, we've got uh, egrets, which will walk all over the neighborhood. They kind of, they, they literally run in a flock, which is awesome. You'll see cranes in your yard from time to time. I've walked outside and seen a three-foot crane standing on my car. It's very interesting. Um, 
Um, but you know, they don't challenge you or anything like that. We have peacocks. I, I mean, the very first time we showed up to Dunedin, there was a peacock on the playground with the kids. It was unbelievable. Um, and he left the kids alone. The kids left him alone. And when he showed his feathers, it was one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had. You know, we with those things also come the good things. I mean, you can go to the ocean and see the stingrays in there. Uh, you can go, we do have to teach the kids how to do the stingray shuffle, by the way. You just shuffle your feet. That way you don't step on one of those guys. We've got dolphin out there, of course. We've seen sea turtle hatch. You know, there's a lot to love about that, but you got to know what you're dealing with here, okay? It's, you know, you're going to encounter some things that you most likely have never experienced before. Just be prepared. It's not the end of the world, but for some people, they can't take it. You just need to know about it. Number three on our list is insurance. And this has become a very hot topic. If you look through the comments in these videos, you will see people who are, quite frankly, they're uneducated. Um, and most likely they don't live in the state. They say things like Florida is, you know, sinking and you're never going to get homeowners insurance. And, and here's what I got to say about all that. It's just completely false. But you do need to be aware because this will be an adjustment for you. Um, you know, there have been a lot of insurance companies that have chose to leave the state of Florida. You know, we are challenged with hurricanes um, as a state every single year. You know, we have severe weather with tr uh, strong tropical storms. Those things are all true, okay? Um, and, and it does make things difficult, but everyone in the country is facing these things right now, right? State Farm, which was the largest insurer in the state of California, chose to move out of that state because of things that happened to them naturally. They're pulling out of all kinds of states, Georgia, the Carolinas. It's just crazy what insurance companies are able to do to you and me as a citizen. It hasn't, you know, part of it has to do with the state, but more, more importantly, this is about, you know, companies and their bottom line. Let's just be real about it. So I want to share this transparently because you are going to spend more money here on insurance. Are homes uninsurable? No. Are some homes uninsurable? Yes. If you build a home on the Gulf Coast, literally right on the Gulf Coast, it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get that home insured. If you've got the money to do that, that is the game that you choose to play, okay? I have a single family home, a four bedroom, two bath home, 2,000 square foot with a pool. We live less than two miles from the Gulf Coast of Mexico. I live in a non-flood zone, a non-evacuation zone. My home is 28 feet above sea level, which in Florida is like a mountain. <laughs> and we pay currently $2,500 a year for homeowner's insurance. And I don't know, some of you are thinking that's outrageous. Others of you are laughing at that price. Keep that in perspective. Now we've had clients come here and try to buy properties right on the water. Homeowner's insurance is $10,000 or more. That is a reality that you need to be aware of. The other thing that comes with insurance here in the state of Florida that you need to take in consideration is auto insurance. We are not the worst. You'll see that in the comments. That's not true. We are the third worst though, which is not exactly, you know, you're still making the podium. That's not a great thing. Florida has more uninsured auto drivers than anywhere else in the country. That is a reality, statistically speaking. So that is what puts a lot of pressure. You also have 20 million people here. You've got plenty of, uh, of, of new drivers. And we of course have a lot of seniors in the state, which puts a lot of pressure. Put that on top of the fact that everybody is from everywhere. People move from all over the world and all over the country and they bring their driving habits to Florida. You don't have to take another driver's exam to, to, to get on the road here. If you have a driver's license, they'll issue you a new one. And listen, if you're used to making left-hand turns in a specific way where you live and you come to Florida, it's completely indifferent, and no one's ever told you otherwise, you start making mistakes. And I tell everybody when it comes to Florida, driving here is a full contact sport. You gotta have your head on a swivel. You can't be farting around on your phone, paying attention to things that don't matter because there are a lot of, of just crazy things that I see on the road here. And in my experience, y'all, I've traveled a ton. I used to travel corporately. I see more crazy things happening on the road here in the state of Florida than I have seen anywhere else. All right, you get out in the left-hand lane here on, on I-75 or 275, and you're not doing 75, 85 miles an hour, they will run you off the road. <laughs> and not literally, but it feels that way. You do not belong out there if you are not hauling behind. The right-hand lane, it, that is put aside for people who like to do the speed limit. And even then, it can be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm, I'm kind of tongue-in-cheek here, but there is absolute truth in what I'm saying as well. Do your research, do your homework, 
you can still get insurance here. You know, cost of ownership on a property is important. The type of car that you drive, you know, there's lots of factors on it. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, it does really help out the channel, but it also helps other people who are considering making the move to Tampa Bay area. So we were just talking about traffic. I wanna kind of get back into some of the bullet points here because traffic is also one of those things that not everybody's gonna tell you about, but you need to know about. With those 300,000 new residents moving to the state of Florida for three years in a row, it has definitely put some challenges on all of our infrastructure. Miami, Orlando, Jacksonville, Tampa, we are growing like crazy trying to keep up with them. And listen, Tampa's an older city. The infrastructure wasn't necessarily built to have 3.3 million people, you know, like we do here in the greater Tampa Bay area, but here we are and we're all left to deal with it together. And it's a very interesting time. Again, you have people that relocate here from all over the area, so they bring driving habits with them both good and bad. Um, you've got seniors and young people like we talked about before. And then more importantly, you have this tremendous amount of growth that has occurred in the area here. And it's put a lot of strain on our roads. Our roads are in overall really good condition. And, you know, again, I might be biased because I moved from Metro Detroit that has some of the worst road conditions in the United States. It was so sad. You're called the Motor City, but <laughs> you can't drive anywhere without risk of getting a flat tire or driving in a pothole and ruining your car, which is so sad. But when you move to Florida, it's not like that at all. Now, are the roads perfect? No. Have I run into some potholes? Yes, and I'm gonna use the term pothole loosely because my perspective of pothole is something that your car can go in and may not ever get back out of. <laughs> Most certainly can blow a tire. A pothole here to a local person is something that is not completely flat with the rest of the pavement. So like, there are divots is what I would call them from time to time. I do see those, but the overall road conditions here in the greater Tampa Bay area are awesome. What is not awesome is the length of the lights. And that is something that took me a very long time to get used to. Some of these lights can be two and a half minutes long before you're able to either progress forward or make a turn. It is insane to me. You can um, knit a blanket. You could probably start a business. You can definitely check up on your email. You can do all kinds of things sitting in that car waiting for those lights to turn. It just takes forever. And every one of my clients who has moved here or my friends that come down, they're like, dude, what is up with the lights? And I'm telling you right now, it is something you're going to have to get used to. If you live in a world where 30 miles is 30 minutes, that ship has sailed. Okay, I'm just letting you know right now. Can you do it on the highway? Of course you can. Unless you're in downtown Tampa during rush hour, then you're definitely not gonna make those types of speed. Right downtown in, in greater Tampa Bay area, you know, be in, in regular rush hour, it is going to be congested and it can get what feels like ridiculous. Now, we ranked 30th out of the 50 major cities in terms of congestion. So put that in perspective. But if you're a local and you've seen this growth, it is, I'm sure this has really been a thorn in your side. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't love the traffic here either. It's not great. Is it terrible? No, it's nowhere near what you see in Los Angeles or Chicago or any of those other areas, but you definitely need to put a little bit more time, you know, into your drive because that is probably gonna take a little bit longer than normal. But we're really blessed here. I mean, honestly, I live the furthest western point of Tampa Bay and I can still be to the airport during peak hours in 45 to 50 minutes. I have made it from my house which is on the Gulf Coast to the Tampa airport in 28 minutes before. So keep that in perspective. Make sure you do a little bit of research there. It's not as bad, but it's definitely congested. Now let's get into everyone's favorite topic if you don't live here, hurricanes. And you know, I completely understand. Before we moved to Florida, this was part of our research. I went over to Dr. Google, started typing in where are the worst places for hurricanes in Florida, and you know, scared myself to tears. It's like going to WebMD. Don't do it. <laughs> because the reality is much different. And you know, being here for five years now, we've had three encounters with hurricanes. Um, the first one was supposed to come, never even got close. The second one was Hurricane Ian two years ago, and boy, that was a real shakeup for me personally. I shared my experience with that. Um, and mostly just because I've never been through anything like that before. And Tampa Bay was spared. You know, it, it's incredible how, how blessed this region really has been. It's 1921 was the last time a Tampa Bay took a direct hit from a hurricane. And that, you know, hit St. Pete pretty hard. 
our infrastructure was entirely different at that point. Properties were built entirely different at that point, but it's literally been over a hundred years since we've had to deal with the direct shot of a hurricane. Now we have been impacted Hurricane uh, Ian, you know, two years ago, definitely put an impact in the area. We had some flooding in some areas um, and a lot of washout on our beaches, erosion of the sand in our beaches. That's really been one of the major impacts we've seen. Um, the second um, was Hurricane Ian this past year. Same thing. We definitely had some flooding in the greater Tampa Bay area. Um, you know, South Tampa and, and downtown Tampa are very low lying areas. The bay itself is very shallow. It's roughly about 12 feet deep all across the bay there. Um, so it, you know, it definitely lends itself to some challenges in those low lying areas. And there was some flooding right on uh, Bayshore Boulevard. You can go check out the videos. There was this one video I saw of um, two guys trolling the news center because it wasn't nearly as bad as uh, the weather channel said it was going to be. I mean, when Jim Cantori leaves, you know, it's not that bad. Um, so, you know, it's just part of the deal, but these guys were riding a rubber duck behind the weather channel, um, anchor, you know, making fun because the weather channel anchor is out there in full gear. And these guys are out there shorts and a t-shirt riding this, you know, huge inflatable duck behind them. It was awesome. Now, here's what I want to share with you guys. You, you need to be prepared. You know, when you come down here, try to buy a home that's in a non-flood, non-evacuation zone. Those things make sense, right? Like if you want to be on the Gulf Coast and that is your dream, then you're gonna make an exchange, right? The sun is hard on things. The weather can be difficult on things. We've made a decision as a family that basically if it's a category three or stronger, we're leaving. We, I always tell everybody, I take my guitars, I take my dog and I take my family. Everything else can be replaced via insurance. And this is just the exchange that we're willing to make. We've been very fortunate. My prayer is that that can continues. I can't make any guarantees on it, but it hasn't been as bad as I thought it was going to be. Having said that, it has definitely impacted some areas. Our brothers and sisters to the south down in Fort Myers and Cape Coral took the worst of it in Ian, and it was pretty bad as you guys are well aware. So keep those things in perspective. You know, you're gonna have to make a trade. You're going to be playing basically Russian roulette with the weather if you choose to live on the coast in Florida. It's just a reality of living here. The next thing they're not telling you about living here in Florida is the water quality is just flat out bad. Now, I know there may be some areas where it's better than others, but you know, in general, the water has been terrible. All, all of our travel through the state, you know, visiting family and friends all over the state, didn't matter where we were, the water tastes bad, it was tough on our skin, tough on your hair, it's just not a pleasurable experience. And if you are moving from an area that you have really good water, this is going to be an adjustment for you. Here in the greater Tampa Bay area where I live, the water is pretty hard overall. Um, it does not taste well, it's never cold because our ground never gets cold, keep that in perspective. Um, it's really hard. Um, and you know, if you have a glass shower, man, it is very hard to keep up on those things if you don't have water treatment. Okay. So my recommendation is if you're going to move here, please take into consideration if your home doesn't already have a water softener, you're probably going to need it. Obviously you want to get these things tested, but most likely you're going to need a water softener if you're living here. And then the other thing, if, you know, if it is in your budget, do yourself a favor and get some form of water treatment, whether that's a reverse oscillator osmosis system or charcoal filter, whatever it is that you can do to, to help make that water better, it's a strong recommendation. You know, we're working on all of those things in our house right now, and we still buy bottled water. We buy uh, spring water from Zephyr Hills. Um, we've got those big five gallon jugs and that is our drinking water. You know, we bathe in it and everything else is great. It's fine. But like, I would just prefer not to drink the water. It's definitely not nearly as good as I had back home in the Great Lakes state. We were spoiled. I understand that. But like when you move here, it's going to be an adjustment. A lot of people will choose to use a, a pump to irrigate their lawn rather than using their their um, the city water because it's expensive so keep that in perspective now that's going to be relative i don't know where you live we pay about 125 dollars a month for water here i have a large family i have three small children they are 11 um, 9 and 5 i have a wife and myself and we have a pool so like just keep those things in perspective we spend about a th um, 125 dollars a month on water 
Um, but when you pump water out of the ground, you'll see crazy stuff on the neighbors, right? Some of their lawn will start to um, turn rust color. Um, it will stain the side of the houses because there's so much rust in the water and sidewalks will be stained too. Now, when you get out into the newer developments, they are doing treatment on that water ahead of time. So they're filtering, so they're not having the staining and those types of things. But this is something to take into consideration because if you like good, good beer, if you like good pizza, if you like good pasta, if you like good bread, those things are gonna be influenced by the quality of the water where you live. And if you don't have great water, it's really hard to have good items like we were just discussing, right? Like you can't have great pasta, great uh, pizza, and great bread if you don't have good water. You know, so keep these things in perspective. I'm not saying it's not worth living here, but you do need to know, right? If your skin is super sensitive, if you don't like um, hard water, you know, it's, it's hard on your, uh, your washing machine. Just keep these things in perspective. Now the next one on our list here is the cost of owning a home. What I have found in my experience is the cost of home ownership here in the state of Florida is more, especially when you get on the coastal regions. Now, you may live in a coastal region already and say, Juan, we're already used to that. But when you add in the fact that we get approximately 250 days of sunshine and our UV index is usually maxed out at the top, you will find that things start to break down faster. You know, most of the products that you and I touch on a daily basis or purchase, especially when it comes to the exterior part of our homes, are petroleum based. And anything that is petroleum based does not necessarily hold up well to ultraviolet light hence the sun beating it up. So things like your fence, you know, um, things like your roof, which is super important, you know, a shingled roof and uh, an asphalt roof is made with petroleum. Our roads are made with petroleum. So when you start to think about these things, they, they don't necessarily hold up the greatest. A roof that should last 25 or 30 years, you may only get 15 or 20 years of life out of that here in Florida. That's why you will see people put things like a terracotta roof on or a steel roof to to try to mitigate some of these issues. Um, it's hard on your windows, it's hard on the paint outside, it's hard on your fence, it's hard on the screens over your pool, it's hard on your lawn, it, it just can be difficult on things. So you add that in as one factor, then you add the other side of it, which is um, we typically are humid and wet during the summer, so mold and mildew can build up. My recommendation is absolutely get a power washer or hire someone to come out to your property two times a year, because right now, I mean, we're rolling into mid-January and my driveway is covered in mildew. And I've already had it clean. It wasn't even five months ago. So it's just part of living here that you gotta keep in consideration. It's not the end of the world, but you need to understand that. You know, you, you factor in the hurricanes, you factor in the storms, you factor in, you know, how hard the sun is on things. And all of a sudden cost of ownership can go up. Our air conditioners run constantly. They are much larger than you're probably used to, to seeing in your own yard. And they run all the time, especially during the summer. So these are things you need to take in consideration ownership here the expensive parts are going to be your roofs they are going to be your ac those are like two of the biggest factors you know if you've got older plumbing that can mess with you as well but like and um you know you're going to paint more often than you probably do where you are now these are things to just take into consideration that way you have a full picture now the next thing i'm about to share i didn't hear anyone talking about before we made the move. As a matter of fact, my own family didn't share this with us. And I've shared this before, but my father-in-law lives on the Atlantic coast of Florida and we used to come down and visit him for years. And we would always come down during the nicest time of the year, right? We'd be down in February, April. You know, he lives in South Florida. Of course, the weather is amazing. We loved it. A huge part of the reason why we wanted to move. As a matter of fact, we thought we were gonna move to that Stuart Jensen Beach area for almost a decade. And we ended up deciding on Tampa. But what we weren't aware of is what's called red tide. And this is a, you know, a bacterial, it's an algae bloom that grows in warm waters and it's typically fueled by nitrogen. And you know, I'm, I'm not a biologist here, so I wanna tread lightly, but I want you to understand the impact that it has on the community and the marine life, because it's important to understand. When Kate and I finally made the decision that we were gonna call Tampa Bay home, we knew that Indian Rocks Beach, that was basically the area we wanted to be in. We rented an Airbnb in September. Remember, September's still one of our warmest months here. We flew down, as roughly around September 18th, I believe. We flew into Tampa, drove over to the beach. We were so excited, had an Airbnb over there. <laughs> the very first night, we're like, we're going to see a sunset. It's us and our 10-month-old daughter, and we walk onto the beach, and um, there wasn't a whole lot of people 
out there, which I thought was kind of strange, but you know, hey, it's September, it's the off season, you know, didn't mean much. But as we started to get closer, um, I started to recognize the smell, her and I both did. But you know, we just thought, well, that's weird. It's kind of funky. But um, you know, as we got closer to the water, it really started to get strong. And what we weren't aware of was there was a very healthy algae bloom. Red tide was on the Gulf Coast there. Um, and that smell we were smelling was dead fish. And um, it was one of those situations where we weren't we were just so ignorant. We didn't understand what it was. And to be quite frank, we probably didn't belong there. You know, they had, um, you know, they put these signs up that says, hey, you know, the water's dangerous, those types of things. We did not go swimming, by the way. Um, and it was still a beautiful evening, but it stunk and it was, it was, you know, we would cough a little bit and it was just one of those weird moments. Um, now, we stayed the full week. We ended up never going swimming in Indian Rocks Beach the week we were there. We drove an hour north to get into the water. That was the reality of it, but we didn't care. We wanted to live here so bad. It was safe up there. We, we drove up there and got in the water, um, but we started to ask questions. What does this mean? What does this look like? Now, the following, you know, we ended up um, making our home purchase that December. We came down, no algae, right? The next year, no algae. Uh, the following year, algae. And it's kind of been this every other year thing since. And it's crazy, man. It, it literally, when it gets bad, it can kill millions of tons of marine life. It's because it, it, what it does is it feeds off, um, you know, the, the, what the, what the fish and the marine life breathe. And it's just so hard on, on the marine and the community. You know, if you have, you know, um, respiratory illness, it's not necessarily a good thing for you. And when it gets really, really rough, there are times, you know, I've told you before, we're, we're roughly two miles off the water. There are times when we can tell the air quality changes. And that is very interesting. Now that's only happened once, but in five years, that's two times too many as I'm concerned. Now, is it enough to make me want to move? No. Is it happening every single year? No. Um, do I go and swim in the beach every day? No. But there was an entire summer that we ended up not going to the beach because algae blooms were that bad. Um, I know other people went, but we just made the decision not to. This is just something you're going to have to take into consideration. You know, these algae blooms are natural occurring, but I'm sure things that we do on a day in day out basis, like fertilize the crap out of our lawns. And, you know, being such a low lying level here when, you know, it rains rains like cats and dogs like it is known to do all summer and all of that fertilizer runs into the Gulf Coast of Mexico and the water temps are warm all of these things are cocktail for more red tide so just sharing that perspective with you this has been our least favorite thing about living here in the area is it enough to make us move? Not a chance. Are we absolutely in love and so happy we made the decision to call Florida home? 100%. Five years in now and we are not looking back. We love living here. We're so grateful that we made the decision. If you have questions about calling Tampa Bay or Florida home, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. Be more than happy to jump on a Zoom call, have a conversation, share transparently the good, bad, and the ugly because that's what we need to be honest with you. I'm also going to leave two other videos up here that uh, YouTube thinks you're going to like. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.